Hi, my name is Ken Brophy. I'm the Tools Team Lead here at RTI, and I'd like to give you an overview of Admin Console. Admin Console was designed to help visualize, debug, and administer distributed systems. To visualize the distributed system, you can look at the network visualizations, which we'll start with, and you can also visualize the data flowing in the network. So to visualize the network itself, we'll start with the system view. System view gives you a, an overview of the entire system, so you can look at um, how the whole system is put together, all the different hosts, domains, uh, readers and writers, and the processes. The, the view contains a summary here of all the different um, entity types that are in the system. So if you want to know how many readers, writers, publishers, subscribers that you have, you can see that here, as well as your versions of the product that are in use. And you can see the overall system health, and our health right now is saying that we have some warnings because of some log entries, so we'll see that in a little while. You can also filter this view. If there's too much information being shown, this is a very small system, so it doesn't have that problem, but you can turn off um, different domains so that you have less to look at and uh, declutter your, your view. So let's double click and look at the next view, which is the domain here. So we'll look at domain view for number six. Here we get a little bit more detail. So now we have host and process, domain participant, but we also have the actual topics that are being read or written. And here you can see this, this particular domain participant has a writer of triangle, while this one has a reader. And you get even more information, so if we click on a domain participant here, we can see that there's also Wireshark filters that you can look at, and the locators, so you can see the IP addresses and the ports of uh, the entities um, in the system and what they're actually communicating on. So that's the domain view. We'll look at the topic view next. So this is the topic view. And it goes all the way down now to uh, publishers, subscribers, readers, and writers. So this particular one is not showing any, any problems, but there is um, match analysis also being performed here. We'll talk about that a little bit during the debug section. Along with the topic view, we also have the DDS logical view. And this is kind of a summary uh, only at three levels, system, domain, and topic. But it's based on the DDS um, networking concepts. So that's a you know different take on it. And when you click on one of these, it will show up over in the detailed view here. So you can see what's going on. The physical view is a similar uh, tree view, except this one focuses on physical components, so your overall system, your hosts, and then your processes. The processes table shows you all the processes that are running in the system, and if it's a routing service or a recording service or other uh, RTI infrastructure service, you'll get further information about um, the, the state of it, whether it started or not, and things like that. Lastly, the process view. If we click on this one process, for example, we can see the other processes with which it's communicating. This one only happens to have one other process, so we've got the writer and then the reader um, in another machine. And you'll see these empty publishers and subscribers. That's because their, their endpoints are being filtered out. So if we turned them on, you could see a lot more topics uh, but these are the RTI topics that we use to communicate information around the system. So it's not really needed for, uh, for the demonstration, so I have it filtered out. In order to visualize network data, we could subscribe to that topic. So if we go to the topic 
and hit subscribe. There are many settings that we can put in here, um, but the defaults are good enough for this demo. So we'll switch to the uh, sorry, the data visualization perspective. And here we can see the instance table. This particular topic has four instances where each row it represents an instance in this particular view. We can see the data changing uh, very rapidly in real time. We can see some metadata about the samples, the instances. In this case, all four are alive. And we can see that there's actually two different data writers so we could click on the data writer and actually go to see who's um, pushing that data into the network. But for now, we'll stay on data visualization. So as we look at a row, we can click on it. The sample inspector will give us more information. This particular data structure is very small, just a name and, and a value. Um, if it were very uh, nested, you, you would see, you know, um, nested data structures in here and you could expand those. So this gives you a vertical view versus the horizontally based um, instance table. And of course you could select you know more fields to, to show if you wanted to see them. In addition to the instance table and the sample inspector, we also have the sample log. So if we visualize sample log, this view, each sample is a row rather than each instance. So unlike the instance table, in this view, um, the rows are, are constantly being updated and added to up until some maximum, which the default here is 10,000 rows, which you could change, of course. But this shows you every single update to the topic. So if we were to just pause this for a second, pick a value, and look at the sample inspector, we can look at all the pieces of data that were sent for this topic. So we could arrow down, and as we arrow down, we could see each and every update for this topic. Now, the sample inspector is kind of unique that in that it can show data from more than one topic. Um, so if we wanted to, we could show data from the triangle topic as well here. Um, if you want to learn more about these views, there, there's a more complete video on YouTube, and you could go um, look for that. So lastly, let's take a look at the time chart. So here we could visualize in a time chart, and let's change these uh, settings here to maybe five seconds because this data is flowing rather quickly. So here we have the sine wave. Of course, we can plot more fields. So these are all instances in the same topic, but here again, you could plot other topics if you wanted in other fields from other topics. So this is a pretty flexible UI. And then we'll grab this last one here. And this view has all the normal things for zooming and panning and putting annotations in if you want. It also provides historical data. So if you go back, for example, you can see right where we added uh, different views here. So there's the tangent being added to the sign. And then later on, you know, we had the square wave and then we add the triangle wave in here somewhere. And now you can see the triangle. Each of these views has an export or you can export the data that's being shown in the view to a file. Uh, that's really helpful if you want to, for example, share data with a colleague or a coworker and, you know, highlight certain data or do an external analysis on it um, to, you know, maybe look for trends or, or look for issues uh, or validate that your system is actually working correctly. So that's data visualization. We'll move on to debugging. And for debugging, I want to look at the, the function topic again, and we'll go back to administrative for a minute. Right now, uh, everything is working correctly in this view, um, but I can add uh, a problem.
So here I've added a new subscriber and that new subscriber um, does not match. So you can see the display changed quite a bit. It went from all green endpoints to now we have a mix of green and yellow and red. But let's go right to the one that says broken. So now we can see with the health view that there's a QoS um, incompatibility. And if we go to the match analyses view, we can um, see the exact details of what the mismatches are. So in this particular case, we've got three. So the deadline, the destination, and the ownership are all mismatching for various reasons. And if you don't remember all the details about the matching, you can click on this and you'll get the description of it. And right down in here, you can look for the compatibility. Also for debugging, we have the QoS view. So this particular data reader has, um, has these different QoS settings here for the data reader. You can see them all. Now these are not the full QoSs because um, this is only the information we glean from discovery. But here you get the important ones that control matching and the like. And you can also see the protocol version, the uh, vendor, and things like that. And you'll notice that this view is resetting and, and bringing me back to the top. That's because the um, filter is changing on a regular basis, this content filter. So here we can see the filter expression and we can see the parameter, uh, this percent zero here, is changing all the time. So that's why this view is reloading. It's, it's a real-time view of the QoS, uh, just like all the other views in Admin Console, they're, they're real-time. And lastly, for debugging, we have the data type. So this particular data type, as we saw earlier, is quite simple. It's just a name and, and some data. But you can see the min and max sample sizes, the type code, type object sizes, these help you tune QoS in your QoS configuration XML file. So you can see which one has the largest type and the sample sizes, so adjust your queues so that you get the memory consumption that you're looking for. And with this data type view, you can also grab the IDL, the equivalent IDL. So you could, you know, copy this out of here and put it into another application. If, for example, um, you were working with a partner and they sent you a uh, binary and you don't you didn't have their data types and you needed to You know look at their data types more carefully and maybe make a simulation of it. This would allow you to, to do that So lastly, I'd like to talk about administration a little bit Here we have the routing service and we've got our graphical view here for the routing um, But we also have commands that we can send to it so if we take a look at Shapes Demo that's running back here, we can see the shape that's running and routing services pushing the data from domain six to domain seven. So we could actually tell it to pause and you'll see the data pause. And there are other commands that we can do. Um, but the interesting thing is that you get a graphical view of the actual routing service um, routes. And you can see, for example, like the latency, and there are other characteristics that you can see here with the metrics. Make this a little bigger. So you can see the input and output uh, in terms of samples and bytes, and you can see the latency that you're experiencing in microseconds. Um, you can see the configuration, so you can look at that and, of course, copy and paste that if you want. This is on a per entity basis, so if you were to pick a particular entity, you'd see the configuration for that entity. The other interesting thing is um, all the process views, routing service included, have a display of the log data. And I was talking earlier that we were seeing some uh, warning log data. This is where it, it's coming from. So the routing service uses distributed logger. Distributed logger sends along uh, the log data from 
the remote uh, process and you can control the level that you get it. This one we're, we're at warning right now and we're seeing some warnings. Um, so, you know, that may be something to look at. Uh, you can debug uh, from here, but this happens to be uh, some type code information, uh, which in my case, I don't need routing service to know about the type code for all of my topics, only the ones I'm routing. So, so this isn't a problem for me, but it's good to know that this is here. Um, so you can use this with your own applications as well. I uh, just use distributed logger and admin console will pick up that data. Warnings and errors will result in warnings and errors in the health status of your process. Um, there are a lot of views we haven't covered. Uh, one other one I just wanted to mention quickly is the resource consumption. So here you can see the CPU of the overall service as well as each uh, session's CPU. Um, and you can see the memory. So this, I think, is a pretty helpful little view. Helps you tune your system and know where your, your resources are going. But it is limited to um, our infrastructure services. And lastly, I just wanted to mention the help system. So the help system has a lot of resources, including uh, tutorials. And it's got um, reference information for all the different views. So you can get a lot more information than I'm going through today. Uh, go ahead and take a look. And if you have any uh, questions or concerns, please let us know. Thanks very much.